Welcome to the MMA Roadshow, episode number 433. My name is John Morgan, and Cold Coffee is with me here in Sin City, but not in the same place, but in Sin City. We, we, we are here together in Las Vegas, in the home of the National Hockey League champion, Vegas Golden Knights, in the home of the Vegas Sphere, and the home of the MMA Roadshow. But we're not together because... Uh, well, I'm just going to throw it out there. We'll just get this all out on the table. Your boy got sick. Your boy got sick is what happened. I uh, came down with a little bit of uh, maybe some, some food poisoning overnight. It was either I did make a late night run to B-dubs with the family or – I, now I, the facts are coming out. The uh, facts are coming out. Hold folks. on. It was not a frosty <laughs> beverage laden run to be dubs. It was more just like there was not a lot of stuff open last night. By the time we were ready for some late night dinner, uh, we were kind of trotting around town a little bit. So there was that, and that could have very well been. Although also for lunch yesterday, uh, I kind of had like the sketch leftovers. You know how there's something in there and like you're like, ah, it's probably fine. It's probably good. Fridge is down to temp. We're all good to go. And I heated up one of those kind of sketchy leftovers, and I think, I think this might have been a very uh, self-imposed illness that I had to deal oh, with. Oh, so you, so you don't uh, you don't uh, partake in your old restaurant uh, tactic? You don't you're not labeling out your your uh, <laughs> your leftovers in the fridge. You're not you're not sharpieing them. I know. You know, must eat by this, or you know, this is the date. You know, and you don't you're not tossing out. You're not rotating your stuff. I mean, your, I do uh, rotate. I do rotate. <laughs> I will say the food service uh, background in me never dies. Like my wife does not necessarily have that same level of detail to the fridge arrangement. And I'm, like, trying to, you know, making sure everything's in contain. I'm not putting day dots on anything. I'm not going that far. We're not putting, like, yeah. the day dots on there. But they are, like, I do have everything in containers, and I have them rotate, and I put the old on top of, you know, the old on top of the new and all that stuff. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, somehow, though, it's just – it's still one of those ones. What was it? What What do you think it was? What was the uh, what it was, was the It was some, you... some chicken. And, and here's the thing is I don't like to cook my chicken ultra well done because then it just stay it dries yeah. out, and so it was in there a Especially little bit. Especially if, you know you're gonna, if you're not going to finish it and you might have to reheat it. Yeah, you want to give a little bit of leeway. A little under, a little under that 165. I think maybe I went a little too far under that 165 and let it just chill up in there in the refrigerator for a little too long and – uh, normally my wife is the one that comes around and goes like, you're going to throw that away. Right. And, and, uh, and I probably should have, but I didn't. So anyway, I was, oh, well. a, I was a late scratch to media day today. So I appreciate you picking up the slack and, uh, handling business. I did watch all of your coverage over there. I watched the live stream oh, and we'll, that. uh, we'll talk about all that in just a second. We'll get into it. Um, I do want to say, uh, that as we're doing this in remote locations and uh, we're doing this uh, via the magic of the internet, it does make me really, really, really wish we were doing video at this point in time because you <laughs> are looking <laughs> at your Scott like Coker finest, bro. You are like <laughs> yes. a different person. Missed, I, I feel like I'm about to ask I tell you, you, if I was running that company, I would have – Ngana would be on the roster, dog. <laughs> I would have made the numbers work. I'd make the numbers I'm work. I'm telling you, I'm about to get into details about the sale <laughs> with you and about how the operations <laughs> are going to work moving forward. But, uh, yes, Cold Coffee uh, went and got a haircut. He teased the fact that this may get done, and it did. But you went clean shaven, and I'll be honest with you, I didn't yeah. even realize how long it had been since you had gone clean shaven. You're, you're ta- you said ten years. It's been longer than that. It, it's probably I think I know I was clean shaven. It's funny because I, I happened to see uh, Tim O'Toole and Craig Borsari in the lobby today, and those are VPs or ones that are like super executive VP. I'm not sure what Borsari's title is. He's uh, Tim O'Toole's boss. But Tim O'Toole was a production VP, and he was one of the guys that I interviewed with when I came out to the UFC, and I was clean shaven then. And that was – ever since then, I started, like, I think growing some sort of facial hair or something because I remember I saw some pictures early on uh, when I was first, like, sending pictures back to, like, my Buckeye friends of, like, me wearing a Buckeye shirt in, the, in the, like, my office. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, pointing it out, and I was literally clean shaven. Um, but, yeah, it's probably been anywhere roughly between, like, 10 to, like, 12 years since I've had, like, this. That's crazy, uh, man. Clean face on or whatever. And, and part of it was, like, I mean, it was just getting hot, but I also just wanted to just check in and just see what my face looked like. <laughs> you know? It's one thing when you see, you know, you see your face, obviously, every day. But, you know, when you have a beard on it, you know, you just kind of forget. And part of it, too, was, like, you know, when I started losing weight and I was, like, working out, you know, I was, like, 
it's nice when you you can't see your second chin, <laughs> you know, and you, you know, like things are covered up. But I kind of want to just check in and just see, you know, and just see what the face looked like, and just try something different, you know. Not to say that's going to stay like this forever, but you know, honestly, it was just something to do and just something to try. Um, but yeah, literally look like a different just check in. Literally look. Like I literally a look like a different. And it's funny because I hear people from high school like, "Oh, you look like the old high school, Kenny." I was like, "Dude, I think I was like." One maybe sixty five, one eighty when I left high school. I was like, I looked like I ate my high school version. Uh, but it was just kind of fun. It was fun to see that, you know. But it was it. Uh, I definitely the the going uh, thing was that I definitely shaved off some years when I shaved off the beard. That's it. You know, I don't have the grays, you know, kind of yeah. thrown out there as much. But but um, I'm telling you, I'm not uh, I'm not missing the the heavy facial hair in this heat because uh, it's brutal. When we just left the media day, there was like a massive heat wave, like that rush of heat as soon as you walk oh, back yeah. outside, and it was brutal. And um, but I could feel it on this nice shaved face. I'm telling a lot you, bro. More so than the other the, one, but with the, with, with, I look very different. You look. <laughs> I'm telling you, with the clean shave, and then you put on that Renat Fakratinov hat, bro, and hit the dating sites, bro. Oh uh, wait, <laughs> let me grab to- it. Let me grab it. <laughs> Oh, we're definitely going to video moving forward. We're figuring this out. We're definitely moving to video moving forward. It's Scott Coker with Renat Fakratinov's hat on top of, of the Bellator president. This is amazing. Oh, this is yeah. the worst audio ever. But this this right here is convincing me that we have to go video have moving to go forward. Video, have to go video-wise. Oh, man. Just it's like fun that. To like, yeah. Yeah. Look at that. I don't know, I'll have to put a new picture on the uh, the dating app. But uh, I always hate putting this thing on because, you know, normally, especially right now, it's so fucking hot. I don't want to, like, sweat and then, like, ruin it. Like, it was such a surprise when he gave me this. And I was I was so honored. And I was like, dude, thank you so much. I mean, he pulled it right off his head. And then I didn't even think about how on fight night when he saw me, he's like, yo, where's the hat? I'm like, bro, I cherish that thing. I'm like, I don't want to fucking wear it and make it, like, yeah. dirty or nasty or drop it or, heaven forbid, take it off and, like, forget it somewhere. But you bring um, it and to then the when next I explain time, that, right. he understood it. But you're gonna have to wear it next <laughs> Maybe. time. Maybe. But then, then I feel like I'm treading the line of like, you know, like I'm ro- unprofessional rooting yeah, for a guy like true. on a fight night. So I, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to cross that line. But I think he'll, I think he understands and stuff. I mean, he saw the picture. So, uh, but yeah, I don't want to ruin it. But yeah, it's funny. But yeah, it sits here in the office. But yeah, how dare you, Scott Coker, put on a UFC fighter's <laughs> gear? You know. <laughs> <laughs> Too great. But it's ridiculous. People used to always joke about that, and and I don't. I know. We, I'm sure we told this story because we've been doing this for so darn long. There was a time when we were covering a Bellator event, and I was on uh, press row, and a guy tapped me on the back of my back of my uh, on my shoulder and was like, "Mr. Coker, Mr. Coker, I have a question <laughs> for you." And I was like, I turn around, like I'm wearing shorts. I'm sure I was wearing shorts and maybe like a polo or something. But I was like, "Are you for real?" And I can't remember if he immediately recognize that i wasn't him um or if i was just like oh sorry sorry i'm not i'm not scott and then he recognized or something but yeah i've legit been tapped on a shoulder at a bellator event somebody thought i was scott coker well, so, i mean listen it, i remember one time we took a picture together just so i could prove to people that we were different individuals <laughs> that's hilarious it's funny because i mean i obviously like i mean i see you every week for the last you know nine years or ten years or 12, however many years it's been i see you every single week and then obviously deal with scott coker a lot over the years so to me i'm like how could anybody make that mistake but if you really if you like don't know the people personally and you're around them like i can definitely see the comparisons i can definitely see it yeah his wallet's a little bit fat well not a little his fat his wallet's a lot fatter (laughs) than my wallet i would i would gladly trade wallets with that gentleman any uh, day. <laughs> Scott Coker has done all right for himself over the years. Yeah, he's doing okay. Game. All right, well, listen, we got a lot to talk about. Uh, first of all, I just want to say what a weird week it's been for me, if I'm just being honest. I'm just out here just doing my liberal race baiting thing, you know what I mean? It's the things that I do as a as a, as a race baiting <laughs> liberal reporter. You're so reporter. woke, bro. You're oh so woke. God. I have been I have been ta- it is so weird to me, man. And I and I don't want to tread through the situation too much. Obviously it comes down to what was said, uh, the the conversation between myself and Dana White at the post fight press conference the other night. Um, but it has been eye opening to me to see how many people go out of their way to tag me on somebody else's clip of the video just to talk trash about me. I'm like, yeah. what is wrong in people's lives? that you need to tag me into a social media post that's not my social media post just to insult me. I don't understand. I just literally do not understand uh, that that frame of thinking. And, I, you know, I, it was actually kind of funny. It was Hot T one time, Oscar Willis, who said, I think sometimes people forget 
that the people that they see out there are real people. Like, I am just a real yeah. person, you know what I mean? And, and like, that stuff, while I, I think a lot of it is trash, like it, I mean, I don't like having an alert on my phone and pick up the phone and it's oh oh what is this and it's oh it's somebody talking shit about me oh that's nice what what yeah. a great what a great way to get through my day you know what i mean uh but I, I try not to take it too serious but it's just it's just been bizarre to me but it's also so weird about how people just make a sum like the whole thing is weird about you're a liberal republic i've never talked about a pol- i don't even know that i have political opinions like i don't even know what i would yeah. qualify myself as politically so to be like oh look at this liberal guy over here da, da, da. i'm like what You're, you you know one question about me and now all of a sudden it's just it has been a bizarre it's been a bizarre thing to me to see i guess just a little a slice of how things get on the political side of things and how people get into that kind of stuff when you're not just talking about fights and just talking about mma yeah. it's been weird it's ridiculous. I mean, and and uh, it's funny because you know, you know me. I don't really live in the Twitter sphere. I very rarely even pull it up. You know, so I kind of almost forgot about that thing because it's like I remember it happened, and then there was some backlash and people were talking shit, and then I just kind of assumed it it was done. So uh, you know, silly me to think that people can't just you know leave it alone. But it doesn't help when people dig things up and then put it back out there. But yeah, I mean, for some of that, it's just people are just angry and just want to argue about something. You know, at any particular point. I mean, there was nothing wrong with the question. I mean, if people feel that it's woke or it's wrong to ask you know when somebody's up there literally going to push something and and obviously it's going to cause anger in multiple parties whether on one side or the other and you know that you're using the actual race of the people as the the subject of why you're talking if you find that that's you know okay and that's fine and you figure that you know that's fine that's fine that's the world you want to live in but you know understand that most people in that have uh, plights you know in polite society don't like to bring up shit that is going to be anger, you know, going to anger somebody that they do, you know, they want to question how your brand or your organization is going to respond to that sort of stuff. Yeah. I mean, you know, if you want, I mean, yes, it's one thing that, yes, you, you have people that fight for a living. Okay. Does that mean they still can't be uh, polite members of society? You know, is it just because they, they happen to fight that you expect them to only be shitheads? 24/7. Well, and, and to be honest I mean, with you, and that, and that was a big part of the question I asked. And, and here's one thing I think is important for people to realize. Just because somebody asks a question as a reporter does not mean that they not necessarily have an opinion either way on how it should go. I just saw it as kind of an important topic. And here's – well, let me – I'll say this point first, and then we'll go further on. But my question really was just that, hey, and, and if it didn't get conveyed correctly or I worded it correctly, you know, that's on me, but – the question really was, hey, listen, you saw what happened in there, and I know you say that, hey, people say bad things, but this thing has some real racial undertones to it. And I'm sorry, I know there's a lot of people that say it doesn't. It does. I'm I just going to have to disagree with you on that. Is there a concern? Like, is this a situation where you, Dana White, might want to step in and be like, hey, guys, I never tell anybody what to say. That's not what we do here. But can we back off this just a little bit? And not, and not even necessarily just for, like – as you said, to make sure that they're proper representatives of society or they're representing the brand well. But I just think about things like safety in arenas and things like that. You know, you think about yeah. – re- remember those scenes of, like, you know, the Dagestanis and the Irish going at it in T-Mobile Arena, you know, in the Habib and Connor fight? And that's kind of what I'm thinking yep. is, like, man, if you've got these – you know, this group of people who feel one way strongly enough and this group of people that feel one way strongly enough, and it's not just, hey, that's my guy and I'm supporting my guy and rah, rah, we're cheering for our dude, but if it, like, gets to this level of hate where there's this yeah. darkness and tension in the building, is that something you might want to step in? Now, if the answer is... And that is, could pop off at anywhere. It's yeah. not even just, you know, I don't know if Dana's just like, well, I don't have to worry about that unless this fight ever goes to Africa. I mean, when it comes to that sort of thing, that could pop off anywhere. That could yep. happen in MSG. That can happen anywhere, you know, where you you have a subject that is so, such a firecracker subject that people are completely either enraged one way or the other. All it takes is just one moment to pop off, and then, you know, then what are you going to do? I mean, like you said, I remember being in Brazil, you know, we, we, we talk about the Colby days, and I feel like there were other events. I remember being backstage and having to completely route a different way because the crowd was so upset about how some of the fights went with um, just their fighters. And it wasn't even like anything in region. It was just they were just so about their people. And, you know, they did they hated the fact that they lost to like an American or something yep. that wasn't them, that somebody that was different that they were causing and breaking into barricades and stuff behind the stage, uh, underneath the arena, all this other stuff. So we had to reroute the way that we were trying to even leave the building. You, yeah, you and, mentioned you mentioned you know, Kobe. That's not even yeah. I, I mean, was like, you just, mentioned Kobe. They crazy. didn't they didn't even have him do medicals, right? They just rushed him straight out there and they didn't even have yeah. him do medicals. It was so bad I mean, they were like legit. just get him out of here. 
Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a legit problem that, you know, you can't just turn a blind eye and just say, oh, you know, I can't believe you're asking that, you know, because then when something bad happens and you say, well, wow, man, why didn't we see this coming? Oh, well, because from the top down, they're they're trying to push it off and say it's not a problem. It's not something we need to worry about, you know, oh, you know, this sport, this sport, these people fight for a living. We don't need to we don't need to, uh, to worry about that shit. You know, that's, you know, talking from a guy that has a private room in the back of the thing that's between <laughs> barricade after barricade after barricade that doesn't have to worry about it. But for the general uh, pope, you know, populace that's in this uh, arena, shit could get very dangerous really, really quickly. And it just, you know, it's. It's a little uh, weird that he, he doesn't have any sort of sensitivities to the people that might be attending some of these events where some of this shit might pop off. It's one thing if it happens on Twitter and nobody's getting hurt. Yeah, you want to you want to get butt hurt because somebody sa- says something that upsets you on, you know, f- uh, Twitter. That's cool. You can go at them. And they can say shit like you might not like the shit that sa- somebody's saying on Twitter. And I agree with that. But it's different when something like that happens when you're actually in a room with somebody. And that's the I think the, the problem that's happened with some of this stuff is that. If the organization is saying, guys, it's just a free for all. I can't control these people. They're going to say what they want to say and then just, you know, put a blind eye to the fact of what that's opening up, the the hatred and the anger. And I think that, you know, that kind of plays back to the way that sort of our world, our, our own country has become very divided in the sense and it's very angry, you know, and I think if there was ever a point where, you know, a lot of people start saying, oh, man, civil war might pop off again. And as silly, as ridiculous as it sounds, I feel like we're closer to that than ever before, you know, ever since it actually happened. And if this is the mindset that uh, if you say something, you know, if these topics that, you know, it's not about being woke. It's just, you know, in my eyes, it's just common sense. Like if you, you know, if you know that you're going to say something, especially along these, these, these certain lines, whether you're talking about, you know, obviously you say something about somebody's family, you're going to get upset. You know, you're going to, you, you possibly can get upset, but if you're talking about somebody and then you're bringing in the whole race, their whole uh, generations of people, you know, whole ethnicity, you know, all this other sort of stuff and, and understanding that, by some of the things that you're saying are cool or fine or whatever you're in a sense starting a fight picking a fight with you know an a, an unlimited amount of people and then to think that you know oh it's you know just just stop worrying about this shit you're like buck it up whatever you know that's that's the idiotic thing and that's what gets, drives me crazy about america a lot of times when america gets pissed off about a lot of shit they're like oh well fuck that dude over there you know, like, uh, I'm going to do what I want to do here. It's just a very American-centric thing. They don't think about anything elsewhere. But then go fucking travel somewhere. Most of these people never fucking travel anywhere. They never go anywhere outside the U.S. And then they understand, they don't understand when they do travel why people think they're, they, the stereotype of the Americans are assholes and we get treated like shit when we travel elsewhere. It's because they look at us and they think we're all just a bunch of fucking hicks that love our guns. I do love my guns. You know, but they just think that, you know, like we fucking hate everybody else and then if anybody disagrees with us, that you know, they just like, well, you know, they they seem to hate all of us, so maybe we should just hate on them. And it's just I don't know why it, it feels like, you know, that uh it feel people want to make you feel bad about saying something along the lines of like or or just even bringing up the fact that, you know, you know this is going to start something. Oh, well, just forget it, man. And you know, don't don't you know, don't worry about it. You're just being soft for worrying about it. I'm like, I'm smart enough to understand. And like what you said, you brought to light, like this is a powder keg waiting to happen. And it can get very, very bad and yep. get very bad on fight weekend or whatever. And it's one thing if you love this shit because you know you can make a fight promo. Are you going to make a fight promo when a fucking uh, riot breaks out in an event because that you allow people to talk crazy shit? And, you know, next thing you know, you know, you got, you know, every African-American, every black guy in the arena fucking jumping white people in the arena. And you're going to be like, oh, it's just fighting, guys. You know, I'm like, if you're going to allow, you know, a fucking powder keg to start, you know, you know, and, and that's not just saying like what Izzy said. I mean, I think they could probably fucking set Drickus down. I'm like, Drickus, yo, let's talk about well, some things real I was, quick. I was going to say, you I was know, say it's it definitely t- not all one side. It's no. not one way or whatever, but they need to educate the fighters to a point where i get it they fight for a living and they they do whatever but it doesn't mean that you have to be completely clueless or just think that everything you say has no sort of ramification because everywhere else if you don't have your own business and you're not working for yourself you're held to a standard for that company and that company can get the fuck rid of you anytime now if i said some of the shit that like izzy was saying or even some of the stupid shit that drickus was saying usa today could say sorry you're gone and there's nothing I could do for it because I don't have my own company. I have to sort of toe the line here. They are working for a company that's like, Oh, well that's cool. Whatever. 
I can't well, stop they, the guys. They fight for a living. Well, it's like, yes, you can. You well, I can guess they're independent contractors, them. so maybe they fall under different guidelines. Well, they could still stop hiring them. But they could still stop you know, hiring I mean, them. You're, you're absolutely right. And, and here's the thing is that – and that's, that's I think, a big misconception about this whole thing is people thought from my line of questioning that I was just questioning Israel Adesanya and his, his use of the N-word in there when that isn't the case. Because if you're a longtime listener to this show, you'll know – the very first, because even people that have been telling the backstory of how this thing all played out aren't going back far enough. In Drigas's first UFC fight on Fight Island, afterwards he said, "I'm going to be the first real, ch- real African champion that breathes African air yeah. and walks in African soil." He said that after his very first fight. I believe it was Marcus Perez was the opponent, and at the time on Fight Island on this show, we said. Bro, I don't think you should say that. Like that's not yeah. a good thing to say. Like, it's like idiotic. And again, I don't think. And for the record, I do. And I like drinking Duplessis. In fact, we ended up drinking beers on the beach one day in in, in Abu Dhabi one day and got to actually racist. talk to him and, and and get to know him a little bit. And and I, I don't think he meant this in a racist way it, in any way whatsoever. However, there are certain situations where even though your intended meaning was not to uh, you know put something in there. It's just implied, unfortunately, because of the complicated history of the continent of the nation of South Africa. You know, it's yeah. it's just there. So it's like whether you intended it to be there or not, it's it's there under the surface. And I just think you have to be respectful of it. And I just don't think he ever did. So I don't think Drigas meant for this to go where it went. But the problem, and again, and I think this goes back to what I was asking about the other night. Are there? I know you don't tell anybody what to say, but again, he said it in his first UFC fight. Maybe somebody should have gotten in his ear at that point and been like, "Hey, we're not going to really tell you what to say, but you know, think about what you're saying when you say real African champion. When we do have three black African champions, and and people might take this the wrong way. And I'm not saying they're right in misinterpreting Drigas or in or inferring anything." But it's understandable that they would. Yeah. You know? So I mean, like, I'm not. I I think it's wrong for anybody to just tell him. I mean, he was. He is South African. I think it's wrong for people to tell him that he's not African. But for him he to, is. you know, uh, try to. For him to be, you know, so blindly or you know, advent, uh, you know, against like these other guys, uh, it's. I'm just. I I'm having a hard time getting the words yeah. together because I, I literally. It's like. You want to sit him down and be like, bro, do you understand? I mean, but you understand the history of your country, you know, where it came from, how it became to be, right. and, and the people, the oppression, and the things. And like, it's never been a. It's it's not like they just ever politely just said, hey guys, oh by the way, we were kind of dicks back then, you know. I mean, like, there's still this level of um, indifference to the people that uh, have less, and um, you know, were oppressed, and it's like uh, they're. For him to, you yeah, yeah I mean, you kind of wish that somebody would be like, okay, when you say these sort of things, there's going to be some misunderstanding. Can you maybe at least phrase in your thing and say, I understand how some people might think this is wrong or blah 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 blah, but this is my belief because I was raised in Africa and this is this is this is me. This is whatever you know. Well, put it like um, this. Think about it like this. Think about this. When Brandon Moreno won the title, right? What do they say? This is the first Mexican-born champion. Nobody ever said this is the first yeah. real Mexican champion, right? Because Cain Velasquez and his family moved across the border in search of a better life, right? And he's a Mexican-American. And, of course, the Mexican people rallied around him, but he was Mexican-American. He was born and raised in the United States, right? But when Brandon Moreno won the title, yes, people made the distinction that, look, this is the first Mexican-born champion, right? And then they've, they've said the same thing for Yair Rodriguez when he was interim champion. They've, you know, they, they said, they've said those things but what they, uh, what they for Alexa Grasso as well, but nobody ever said that's the first real Mexican champion, right? Because it's that, yeah. that's, I think that's the thing is that real aspect of it. Take race out of anything, you know what I mean? If you want to take race yeah. out of it, take race out of it. Although, again, your country did have a racist system set up until not that very long ago of segregation, so... You know, yeah. please understand. Some that. say, some say it's still there. So exactly. So yeah. anyway, I don't know. I don't want to make the whole show about that. You're I right. Like, I mean, it, we yeah. don't like talking politics, but I just, I just think to it, pretend that this stuff isn't there. It is. It has shocked me how many a again hateful messages I've gotten, which is weird. I'm like, you don't even know me, and I don't know why you're bothering to reach out to me to t- to talk shit to me. What kind of person does that? But second of all, like. Just the, the just the ignorance to pretend it's not there. I under, you don't have to be saying either guy is wrong. You don't have to be saying either guy meant to. But you can still look at a situation and step back and go, hey, 
this maybe is this is how it went wrong, and this is what we could have done instead. Yeah. It is. I mean, it's such a hot, crazy topic that people are going to be upset about, you know, and like I said, I mean, it's hard to even talk about it. And I, cause I feel mm-hmm. like once your emotions start getting into it and you try to come up with an answer, nothing sounds right because, you know, there's obviously various levels of both sides of people and people's upbringings. I mean, there were times I remember when I think about and go back to listen to some of the shit, you know, my dad would say when I was younger, I was just like, dude, what the fuck? Nowadays, I'd, I'd have to be like, dad, shut the fuck up. But it's like it was a different generation, different times. And I just feel like there's a lot of people in America that um, have chosen to not try to care about other uh, cultures and other stuff. And it just gets very frustrating. But I realize that's not just an America problem. That happens all over the place, you know. Um, but, I mean, this world the world has gotten too too small for us to not understand and look at the differences and the greatness of different cultures and stuff. I mean, what used to be, you know, you it would be almost impossible to get over to another uh, continent or country without such a crazy laborious travel now that shit could be done in hours. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and then let alone with the, the communications that now enable us to, in near instant, uh, communicate with people across the world. So, I mean, for us to, for people to not take into account different uh, cultures and, and beliefs and other stuff and just only be centric in our own thoughts, um, that's just not a world I want to live in where, you know, it's, it's, uh, where, you know, my belief, our beliefs are the only ones that matter because I mean, you know, how do we ever grow and realize when we do stupid shit, if you don't see somebody else doing something good. I mean, I love the, the I, I feel the travel. I mean, like I always, you know, going back and I see, I, I don't even know why we keep fucking talking about it, but it's hard to not talk about. I always thought that part of uh, going to school, you know, when you graduate, Part of, you know, they make you take, even in high school, you have to graduate, you have to take part of a foreign uh, language. Right. Why do you think they do that? Why do they think you want to learn something out of your own so you can understand and have a, a breadth of knowledge about cultures elsewhere? And yep. in college, I did a, a study abroad, and I wish that they would just make it mandatory where people have to do a study abroad to get a college degree. Because, I mean, especially if you're the next step after that is to go to a you know, is to either create a business or work in business and, and or work with a company that might interact with, you know, people outside of your own borders that uh, you should have some sort of understanding of what life is like somewhere else outside of just what life's like in your own state. You know, to, to think that there's some people that never leave their state, they, they never leave their hometown. Um, how can they have a worldview that uh, makes any sense when you don't see anything further than, you know, a 25 minute drive? It doesn't make any fucking sense. It's you know, pretty the only thing they Look see is on that. TV. But um, yeah, it's such a hard topic. And I'm sure I sound like an asshole because I, I feel like I don't, I can never <laughs> uh, verbalate or make, say the right words about this sort of stuff because it is such a crazy hot topic. I, I This is the stuff you usually, and that's why we don't usually talk politics because I'd rather just have a couple of beers. I'm like, oh, let's fucking move on. What's on TV or something else, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's just kind of crazy. Yeah, it is funny. Speaking it's, of that, it would have been easy to avoid, but I, I just felt it was. It, was it sucks such, that you have to go through it. Yeah, it's that, just, it's just I was another, it, I, another fuck. I felt like you know what be- you know what that doesn't happen on Threads. Maybe you should get off Twitter. <laughs> no, that's like the joke. Everybody's like, "Is Threads where we're supposed to be nice to each other?" We're like, "I wonder how long that's gonna last." I'm like, "It's not gonna last that's long." People, are, hate's gonna go everywhere, you know. But yeah, if you want to get rid of that stuff, John, why don't you just uh, that's funny. yeah, it's hop funny. over to uh, yeah, like you said, we don't like to talk politics, but I felt like it would be disingenuous not to talk about it, considering what a big story it ended up being and how much I was yeah. right in the middle of it. So I did want to give my thoughts on it. Uh, oh boy, that's a fight I'm looking forward to. That's a fight I'm looking boy, forward to. I, I know, that's the fight. It's part. ridiculous. We, we talked about all this it's tension. Ridiculous. I'm like, all right, cool. When's the fight? Can't wait to see it. Oh, yeah, can they, can they start p- punching each other in the face now? Can they just shut up and punch each other in the face? Uh, we need to get uh, to the other big headline, but I, I kind of think I know where you're going because you, you talked about, uh, you said you'd prefer to just have a frosty beverage and watch TV, and then you started to say something about TV, and I can read your mind because I've been around <laughs> you long enough. You were going to bring up Jung Young Park today and y'all's yes, discussion of Korean television <laughs> during the media day today. Woo, you, guys, Woo, Woo. you guys. Woo You guys. Did you see him do the moves, the arm things? That's actually the character. When, I, when he did that, I was like, bro. He knows he knows the show. <laughs> you guys had a moment. That was definitely Jung Young Park's favorite media day ever, dude. Like he's gonna come back, and I don't know what kind of hat his people wear, but he's gonna take care of you, and <laughs> and uh, he's gonna hook you up, man, because he was Jung Young Park. Obviously, doesn't speak any English, but you were you were using the translator to get into some Korean television, and uh, that was the happiest I've ever seen that man. 
it's funny, and 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 it's happened over a few uh, interviews where he comes back and we always eventually somehow get to how he's hungry. He loves In and Out, so I was like, okay, I got to work in the In and Out. And then I remember one time we talked about uh, an anime, and he told me about this different this boxing one. So now it's just like something throwaway. I'm always like, dude, let me just see what what he's watching or whatever. But the funny part is because you know the story. That if, if anybody ever walked in my house and turned on my Netflix, they would think that Jung Young Park lived here because all it is is like Korean rom com and like weird anime and other kind of stuff. So it was kind of funny to have that moment to be able to actually throw the show up, which is actually a really, really fun show. It's called The Extraordinary uh, Attorney uh, Wu, which I think there might be some uh, translation because it actually could even be um, called The Weird Attorney Wu or something like that. But yeah, so I brought that show up to try to talk to him about it, and uh, yeah, he actually saw it. I was actually even went so far as to actually try to learn the Korean phrase to how to say it in Korean, but uh, when I tried to pronounce it back to myself over and over, it wasn't matching up to how the Google Translate said it, so I just kind of gave up on that. But uh, yeah, dude, it's so fun to be able to kind of just have those moments with some of the fighters and be able to, uh, you know, hop in there and then, you know, you know find something to connect that's not just about fight stuff it's it really really makes all the difference yeah no i definitely got a a, a kick out of watching it cracking me up it actually reminds you know God, here we go just going down memory lane i got to i got to get to this francis nagano situation but somebody i don't know who it was somebody brought up that bar that we ended up in seoul south korea oh, that yeah. became like home called bar. base I think it was literally just <laughs> called Bar. Like, we were just walking around this cold-ass neighborhood. Yeah. Uh, it was, there was, like, snow on the ground, I think, when we were there. If there wasn't snow, it was just really, really cold. And we just found a place that said Bar, and we went in, and it was, like, the coolest spot. And we ended up, you know, it ended up being kind of, like, the official thing. I remember, what, like, the last night, wasn't, like, Yair Rodriguez was in there, and I can't remember who I all remember the – everybody. I can't remember. I remember. I remember we were putting, like, massive tables together, and it wasn't even the biggest spot. And I was like, we literally had, like, the whole space. The whole it was space, amazing. It was amazing. Know, but I remember – and unreal. I remember – you were talking to the bar. It was like a family, like a husband and wife, right, that owned the bar. And you were using – Yeah, like, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you were using like Google Chat on your phone or whatever to yeah, like – Yeah, Google Translate. The Google first Translate. Ver- like one of the first versions of Google Translate, and it's not as good as it was na- like now. Then it was like a lot rustier. Now Google Translate so fantastic. You could actually hold it and the, you, you could do like the live translation and all this other crazy shit. Back then it wasn't quite as good. It was a lot more cumbersome. It was more like, here, let me type. Let me show you. All right, now you but type. it was cool, though. Okay, it was still cool. Yeah. Y'all were like, it worked. Yeah. It worked. It pops up as a Facebook memory every once in a while because I remember I put it on Facebook because I was like, dude, this is like the one of the greatest things that ever happened. And that that's and that's part of like what I was saying about the travel and just going to these other places. If yeah. you go to a place and allow yourself to be um, less guarded and to just go with the moment and, and in a sense like – just be embarrassed like it be awkward like that was so it was kind of embarrassing like but it was like I, wa- I was earnest in that I wanted to have a conversation knowing that half the stuff that I probably it translated was didn't make any sense but it was enough that we felt like okay I think I get the gist of what you're saying and then you would respond to that which maybe either took it further down a rabbit hole in the wrong <laughs> way but it still worked and uh yeah i mean like uh, the guy i think i think we're facebook friends i don't think we've chatted <laughs> since because he doesn't speak english um but uh yeah it was it was fantastic i mean like that was one of the coolest that was one of the coolest things so yeah i mean i think about that one all the time because like i don't even know if we'd be able to even find it i think in my mind i kind of remember how we sort of got to the neighborhood um but yeah i would love to someday stumble back upon that bar i think uh, i'd be i would be as happy as can be i would too soul is a really cool place i didn't know what to expect out of soul but i really like soul a lot man it was a it was a fun trip man uh, and, <laughs> and it was cold as shit and morgan still walked around in his shorts and i remember everybody was just like who's this motherfucker with shorts <laughs> There was oh snow God. on the ground. You had your jacket, Sorry, and you were wearing shorts. It's and I was like, "This is hilarious." They were like, "He's not from here. He's not from around here." <laughs> they were like, "Just give him a beer and don't ask any questions. He's obviously yeah. crazy. Like, don't don't upset the crazy man. Just give him his beer." Uh, all right, listen. I did want to get your thoughts with Francis Nagano and Tyson Fury now official on October twenty eighth. We've been we've been talking about the possibilities of it for a while, and. Uh, I mean, I think everybody is pretty universally happy for Francis Nagano. The man got exactly what he wanted. 
Uh, and, and not only just financially in terms of getting a big paycheck, but just getting a chance to fight an elite level boxer, which is, you know, I mean, we all know the story by now. He, he, you know, he grew up watching Mike Tyson and dreaming of being an elite level boxer. And Fernand Lopez was like, Hey, you know, I think I can get you to an elite level faster as a mixed martial artist. Why don't you try that? And he did, but boxing was all his passion. Um, and, and so now it's done and, and I'm super happy for him. I think we all are. I will say it's been a little weird to see all the talk of like, oh, who said Francis was was fumbling the bag? Like, to be honest, I, I never saw anybody. I mean, maybe like just hot take experts or people that are just trying to stir the pot that said he stumbled, that he fumbled the bag. I mean, I think the thing always was, if he gets this boxing match signed, everything's perfect. If he doesn't, then yep. it may have been an issue. But what did we always say is like, hold on. Let things play out. Let's see how it all plays out, and hopefully it'll get done for the best. And it did get done for the best. So I don't know. I thought that was weird that it seemed like uh, I didn't see as many people other than just, like, again, random social media people that were trying to be experts or whatever that said, like, he made a mistake. Like, he still had to negotiate yeah. the contract signed. So anyway, I, I thought that was weird that everybody seemed to be getting real defensive over it. But um, I will say now that it's done – I'm going to stick to the guns that I said all along about here. here's my take on it and my thoughts on it, and I'll let you chime in. I, I have a feeling it's probably pretty similar. But uh, bottom line is I don't expect it to be a very competitive boxing match. Um, that said, the power that, that Francis Ngannou does possess maybe does make it a little bit more intriguing because, you know, yeah. it's like – no disrespect to Conor McGregor, but I just never thought he was going to be able to knock out Floyd Mayweather. Francis Ngannou can knock out probably any human being on the planet. Now, he's got to land first, and that's a challenge against Tyson Fury. So I don't expect it to be super competitive, but I will say at least that power thing does make it interesting. Um, if it was anything other than boxing, obviously if it was a mixed martial arts fight, I'm picking Francis Ngannou all day long. Even to me, yeah, 100%. if it was a kickboxing match, if you just added in the fact that Francis Ngannou could throw low kicks, I would say yep. – He's going to win that, too, because Tyson Fury's not used to it. But it, it is. It's, it's boxing, so I'm picking Tyson Fury. So with all that said, um, I, you know, I have seen, I think, um, you know, our buddy Kevin Ioli, I think he, he kind of came out against it. I've seen some people kind of coming out against it. I will say I'm approaching well, that's this kind thing. Of, that's true to form for, for Kevin as well. Kevin came out. He was against the Mayweather and – uh, right. McGregor as well, but I think he was what he enjoyed it. He enjoyed it, you know. So and it's kind of you know, I, it's it's kind of weird because the same people that come out shitting on it tend to like these things after the fact, you know. But I guess it's it's par for the course for him. But well, that's that's what I think. It certainly didn't surprise me. That, no, it, that it, the hate came out about it. It didn't surprise me, but I, I want to say I'm approaching it the same way I did. And actually, let me find this tweet because I pulled it was from Sports Illustrated's Chris Mannix. Um. He said. I mean, do we know? I mean, do we really know even like the the fine details? Out. I mean, I know they said there's gonna be boxing rules. Does that mean it's a boxing fight with record, or do we even know that? Or is it I don't an exhibition? We, I don't think we know if it's an exhibition yet. We know the title. We just is know not it's on the boxing line. rules, right? We know the title's not on the line, which I think is probably just because they don't want to use um, the sanctioning bodies because the sanctioning bodies get a fee, and they're probably like, well, we don't want to pay a fee for this, so we're not gonna do it. But. My my take on this is I don't think it's going to be very competitive. That said, I'm absolutely interested in watching it. I absolutely will watch it. I will watch yeah. it in the exact same way that I watched Floyd Mayweather versus Conor McGregor, which is this is wild. This is crazy. This doesn't happen very often. Look at these two cultural icons coming together for this sporting event. I will look at it as yeah. like – we're attending a party, or we're watching a party, or it's it's you know it's just wow, isn't this crazy? This is fun, but do I expect? It, 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 am I watching it to say like, man, this is this is boxing at its finest? This is the highest yeah. level we? No, but I think as long as you approach it with that understanding, I think you can still appreciate it for what it is. Yeah, and I mean, and you're getting to see somebody fulfill a, a childhood dream, a lifelong dream. You know, it's you know one thing I see different in this too, like Connor never wanted to be a boxer. I mean, like, I think Connor understood that there was money to be made going into another combat sport with the biggest guy at the time. I mean, the difference with this, I mean, Francis wanted to be a boxer. Right. Um, and it's not like Francis didn't ever do boxing before he did MMA. I mean, like, the guy was training in it. I mean, did he leave that to go and focus on other things he sure did but like you said there's power but this is a guy that's wanted to do this his whole entire life 
and finally had the opportunity to do it against the biggest guy in the sport. How can you not be happy for, you know, of course I'm happy for the the, the numbers, I and mean, I'm sure the, the pay is going to be astronomical, um, and this is what he wanted to do. Um, but also, I mean, this is this is a man that, you know, comes from humble beginnings and now is actually, besides what he's been able to do already, that you could say that he's fulfilled a, a lifelong dream. He's made his dreams come true. This is a legit the, the biggest dream that he ever really strived for. And I think yeah. the the dream when he got into athletics, this is what he wanted to do. And so the, for the fact that him, yes, he could have just took a boxing fight, of course, but he built up um, equity in his name and in his his uh, brand. So you know he wanted a big name, and for him to land the biggest fish out there is just absolutely. Astro, it's, it's just amazing and, it, and it didn't even need to have the belt because he's getting the money and he's getting the name and even if it's not even the most competitive which um it could be but honestly i he's not going to go out there like conor mcgregor he's not going to go out there i don't think try to end it in the first thing i think he's smart enough to realize they can look at the mistakes that the other mma guys are making um in trying to push too fast or and maybe not keeping a proper defense you know um Maybe there is going to be something of this, and Tyson's going to want to try to push on him to see if he has any sort of boxing defense. I mean, we know Tyson Fury's got mad power, but I don't. I think he's smart enough to try to rush in, so I think he might give Francis the time to kind of get his bearings in there. Um, I think the the difference will be, um, you know, should it get if he's taking lots of hits in in defense and other stuff, and as the fight gets long, whether his defenses start to wane because he's tired, he can't keep his arms up, and other sort of stuff, and. Uh, mixed martial arts and other stuff he's able to kind of clinch he's able to grab he's able to sort of put his weight and tire the other fighters arms down um it's just going to be a matter of how sloppy he gets as the fight goes on Mm -hmm. but i think he's smart enough to understand that this is a different sport um than mma because this is the sport he wanted to do i think he's going to go in it with a lot more respect i think he's going to go into the training doing the right things he's he's able to do he's able to afford to have the best trainers and coaches around him that's you know are actual boxing coaches and tacticians and and the best trainers that he could put himself through and when you look at francis he's a he's an absolute specimen he's so strong he's so fit and everything we've seen from him he doesn't tire out like we used to um and again i mean he's going to be able to keep those legs around him he's not going to be pushed as much so i mean he's going to be able to keep that base behind him he's going to make that power is going to carry further because he's not throwing so much other stuff he's not using power to to do lots of crazy clinches and takedowns and other sort of stuff so you know am i gonna go out there and say like oh you know hey watch out world watch out world um i do have the hopes that this is going to go a lot better than uh recent examples that we've seen of mma guys going into it because i believe this is this is something he's thought about over and over and over and i'm sure he's not going to blow the moment by just trying to rush across the cage and try to knock out you know fury in the first round or two i think he's smart enough to understand that this fight how many rounds did they say it was 10 i believe yeah 10 believe 10 rounds i think he's smart enough to understand that you know the real fight happens halfway through you know the first five rounds i think things are are, they're going to be feeling each other out and and tyson's going to be testing to see how well his defense is you know and and you know just like when we saw floyd and mcgregor Mayweather just shelled up for the first three rounds and let you know, you know, let McGregor just wear himself out around roughly two or three rounds. Yep, about three rounds. I can't remember the full gist of it, but um, I think I think we're going to get a better showing than we can. But also, Fury can take a punch. You know, we've seen other f- fighters take Ngannou's power, and and we're talking about the best boxer in the world. So, yep. um, if people think that you know uh, Francis is going to go out and, and take him out with one strike. It's not going to happen, even with the best punch. No, go, um, go watch Deont- Deontay Wilder. It's not Wilder one's not enough. Yeah, go yeah. watch Deontay Wilder. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm leaning definitely towards Fury, but I'm so happy for for Francis, and, yep. and I give him a better chance probably than most. I'm not going to say that he's going to win, but I think I will be willing to say it's going to be a heck of a lot better than what most people think because I think he's approaching it differently uh, than other ones. And Francis is Francis. I mean, like, at this point, how can you doubt the dude? Look at him. That's it. He, he he manifested this. He made this happen, you know. So uh, who's to say what that belief and the, and that power can't do for him? I mean, I, right now, I mean, 
I, you can't doubt the dude. No, I look I, again. I, I I expect Tyson Fury. You know, ninety nine times out of a hundred, if I'm being honest. But I think this is one where maybe you know who, I don't. We haven't heard the price point yet, but maybe if it ends up being, I'm sure it's going to be eighty, ninety, a hundred bucks. I think maybe bucks probably. Yeah, probably. 100. I just saw one hundred nine. Fla- one hundred nine flashed in my head real quick for oh, something, which is such a ridiculous number. One hundred nine. But um, I don't know why. But you know what, <laughs> if man? It, if that comes, I'm going to play the lottery. <laughs> I, I think this is one where maybe you know, if you've got some buddies or whatever, like see if see if everybody can come over and chip in and see if you yeah. can. Like I said, it's it's just going to be fun. It's it's going to be. It, I think if you come at it from that perspective, like this is just going to be a fun night. It's not something we see a lot of. Uh, enjoy the moment. It, you know, you're not necessarily going to see. Uh, the most competitive fight or the greatest upset you've ever expected to see or history being made. But it's kind of wild, man. So I think uh, it, it's cool. So uh, speaking of Conor McGregor, we do have to do the uh, brief weekly check-in on the Ultimate Fighter. Uh, did, did you <laughs> see this l- latest week's episode where Jason I Knight, who, who you were a little worried about, you thought this was going to be I was a little worried. And boy, I look like I, I fumbled the bag on that one. <laughs> if anybody fumbled the bag, you know, if I thought there was a guy that maybe wasn't going to do it, I thought it was Jason. And uh, – he had pretty much the quickest finish, or quickest one of the finish quickest. Of the season, you know? Yeah, unbelievable. Um, man, I, how can you not be happy for that dude? Um, man, I start to feel now. I'm starting to feel bad for the uh, the prospects. Man, like it didn't really work out well. I mean, like oh, they seven. just ran into yeah, they ran into guys that have been there and that are just hungry to get back to it. And it's not like these guys didn't come in hungry. I think it's just the experience level, the experience difference of. Um, what the vets have been through fighting the the toughest at, at the game and then to get back in there and fight these guys that they maybe don't see on their level. It's not like they trained lighter because they thought these guys were prospect. They trained just like they were going to be going in there fighting a vet and it just turned to be more than what these guys wanted. I mean, guy had a great fight. I mean, he had a plan. Like he didn't like those and like Jason said he had he didn't like how Jason was power and he took him down, but just Jason that that transition into that triangle was just slick, man. It Beautiful. was just nasty. Beautiful. Yeah, I mean, and, and it was like perfect. And it, and and you and you go and you hear Chandler talk about. He's like, dude, I think that was like one of the best ones I've ever seen. You know, and he's a champion level fighter. You know, so that's how slick it was for for Jason. Um, but yeah, man. <laughs> now I'm like, dude, can they go eight and zero? Oh? And it's, it's crazy. Un- unreal because they were talking about it. You know, like what do you do? Do you just say, "Hey, Connor, thanks for coming in for the show this week. We're just gonna, we're just gonna now, uh, well, you know, uh, hand over here." I know they're gonna end up giving them some of the fighters. They have to. If they go eight, no, I guarantee they're gonna take some of those fighters and make them Team Connor. They will, so that well, it can be a Connor Chandler. I mean, look, they'll give them Katona right away, right? I mean, that's an automatic. Like that's yeah. gonna happen. So then you figure out what to do. But it was interesting. So first of all, I just want to say the editing and the, uh, I guess, just the wherewithal to catch it. Uh, maybe I guess the audio recording of it as well, but the moment that submission gets done and Connor just kind of like lets out this like groan slash sigh, where it's like oh, and and they've got the audio perfect and they made sure yeah. and used that little clip. I thought that was amazing because it showed his real frustration. And you know, as you said, he immediately goes and asks, "Hey, what if it's a clean sweep? What do we do?" And I saw some people yeah. saying like, "Oh, well, what has he already given up on his last guy? Is he already given up on a scene?" I don't think that's the case. I just think honestly, that was like. Panic might not be the right word, but maybe a little yeah. bit. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, yeah. oh my, like reality set again. Like, yeah. what happens if we, if we lose everyone? Was Knight a one a one pick? Yes. Because I, 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 cause, and I think the next pick for Chandler is his other number it's one. His other pick. number one. Yep. So that's I mean, Connor's got to be like, well, fuck. Now I mean, yep. re, now we're getting his. It's his fours against you know Chandler's ones. You know, I mean, I'm sure he at some point. Was like, man, uh, this is going to be rough. And it's funny because I, whenever they show the previews for the next week, I'm always like, oh, are they teasing me? They're showing this guy getting the better, and then I know they're going to like the episode's going to happen. And it's like, oh, you know, they they got their ass whipped. That was just the one good fight, the one good hit, or something. But then seeing the reaction of Connor after that, I'm like, dude, that clip made me think, makes me think they do go eight they do and go zero it, yeah. for sure. I mean, like when you saw the fight stuff, and then you see sort of the. Connor meet the after. I'm like, dude, do they go eight? No, like this is crazy. But I mean, they had a tough. I mean, I, I feel bad for the prospects uh, yeah. in the sense. I think if it would have been all prospects, um, a lot of those guys would be moving on, would be going further. But they just they had a tough battle in front of them. All those guys to be, you know, those are the kind of guys that they would fight should they get into the UFC. But these weren't just UFC hacks. These were like legit UFC guys that had good runs in the UFC. It wasn't the guy guys that made a debut 
and never got a win and were just like, oh, hey, well, thanks for coming. And then they go in and they say, yeah, you were in the UFC, bro, but you sucked. Like all these guys in the UFC that are here on the show were good fighters at some point. Had some good some good fights in the UFC, so uh, I kind of feel bad for it because I feel like the cards were sort of stacked against them. And I feel like if it would have been all prospects, some of them would actually be getting the chance to get, have uh, you know their chance at getting that contract at the end. But I think anything along the line, just like how we see with the the contender series, so all, some of these fighters that are on the prospect level, especially ones that are connected to Connor, are gonna get contracts. You know, it might, it's not going to be right at the end of the show, but then some of them are going to get asked to come back on to fight in the finale. And some are going to be able to go on. They're still getting that exposure. We're seeing the guys that are, have good fights. They're just running into tough guys, but yeah, man, I mean, I, I like the show. I, I, I think the editing's, um, made it certainly seem, um, that both co- coaches are very involved. In fact, in this one, we actually saw that Connor actually suited up and actually was getting in there and sparring with the guys. I thought that was pretty cool. Yep. I didn't think he looked that great in the clips that they showed. Um, yep. He definitely looked like he Me- hadn't, he just looked uh, not slow because Connor would look like uh, a speeding bullet. Should I get on the opposite side of him? But it just, it just looked like, uh, uh, he was a bit slow, but I did like what he was saying though. He was like about being around all the young guys going. It was getting those juices going. Like he said, that's what I need. You know, I've kind of need that thing, which I guess can fuel on the other side. People say that, you know, he doesn't really plan on fighting again. He just <laughs> did the show for money and, and whatever. And just to keep them toying along a little bit, but just for the product, I placement. did like to hear just that. For the product. Placement. I did like to hear that. And yeah. And for the product placement. Yeah. It's been great but I did. See. I did. I did enjoy hearing that. I did hear enjoying that. Uh, because, uh, and maybe you think like, hey, maybe there is, maybe there is uh, a, a possibility of him actually getting back in there. Um, I mean, say what you want about the guy. I mean, he, he's he's given us a lot of really great moments in the cage. Oh, and absolutely. I would like to see if I could see another one of those. Yep. I mean, I, I would like to see, um, yeah, I mean, even the last fights that didn't end, even the fights that, you know, that ended in injury and stuff, there were still moments of just anticipation that are just – very unique to a Connor fight that Connor's wow. able to bring, you know, bring it. And I miss those sort of things, you know, granted, I, I, I don't do a lot of social media. So like seeing him on his yachts, that's cool or whatever. But I live for those moments where I get to see him go in there and put on these epic performances that maybe someday could be in like the hall of fame. Absolutely. You know, I still feel like he's got that capability, but as time goes on and if he does lose that spark, you know, the potential of that never happen again, becomes more and more real so it was just refreshing to see that spark kind of light up again for him um because it gave me hope that maybe we will see him in there again absolutely so fingers crossed i absolutely do hope we see him again uh and i think we will i think we will i'm keeping my i'm still cautiously optimistic that we that we will see him yeah all right i'm not going to give a full breakdown of usc on espn 49 obviously uh you know not necessarily the most loaded car this is what happens after a loaded pay-per-view you come back you have a car that's a you know, a card full of some fights. I do think there's going to be some intriguing matchups on it. Uh, you know, and looking on the prelims, uh, it's crazy to see Ashley Evans Smith back in there. It's been a long time since she's been in there, so good to see her on the comeback. I, I was bummed today, especially that I wasn't there for media day when I found out Basil Javes was going to be there when he stepped in against Jack Della Maddalena. Uh, Basil it's pronounced uh, Basil. Well, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he came through the it's CFFC. Not, we had actually asked him about that one. Yeah, he comes. He came through the CFFC, and uh, he was the champ at one. He had he had a really really good fight. He, he claimed the belt uh, with a submission win over Christian Savoie, and then lost it with a split decision loss to Evan Cutts, which was a phenomenal phenomenal fight way back at CFFC '94. Then he since got a couple of wins, including a win over Cutts. Uh, and gets this UFC call. Uh, he did actually have a split draw with Jeremiah Wells under the CFFC banner a few years back, uh, and now obviously Jeremiah, we- Jeremiah Wells in the UFC as well. So anyway, I was excited to see uh, Basel step you. in. Just just pumping out the CFFC I, you know, facts. Man. Hey, that's Look my family that. not, right not there. Not sounding like a homer or nothing, man. Oh, I'm a homer. Like that's it. my family. When they come in, like, <laughs> but I, to be honest with you, I really mean it. Like, it's so cool. Like, I like being there, especially for their media day. Um, just if for nothing else, and uh, it, just to give them a familiar face to look at and talk to, you know what I mean? Like, so like I know they're like kind of, t- you know, fired up, and this is new and crazy. And I'm like, hey, I know that guy. Like that guy called my fights or whatever. Like, ah, let's talk, yeah. you know. So I was bummed that I didn't get to do it. Obviously, he's got a huge uphill battle against Jack Della Maddalena, who's uh, got a lot of hype around him and deservedly so. So uh, I was bummed yeah. I was not there for that. Um, I, I I would say too, bummed to hear about Walt Harris as well, man. Um, 
gosh, you know, Walt Harris, I, I talked to him a few weeks back, so I did get some time with him before this fight, and I know how excited he was to be back and how he really feels like after the time away, he's kind of been able to process all the grief and the emotions that he dealt with. And he admitted to me, he was like, I came back too fast. And, I, and I, we, you know, we talked about it. I didn't want to get too heavy because I didn't want to bring him down too much. Um, but I did ask him, you know, after the loss that you suffered, was there a part of you that maybe just wanted to fight because, like, that was a sense of your normalcy and you kind of needed that to keep going. But in retrospect, it probably wasn't the right decision. He was like, yeah, that's it 100%. Like, I thought I needed to fight just because, like, that's what I do and let me take my mind off, you know, all this that I'm dealing with. When in reality, what you need to do is to meet that stuff head on you know, take time away from competing and just really process your emotion and your grief and your loss. Um, and he felt like he had gotten to that point. And then he finds out this week, right before the comeback, that he has a USADA issue. He posted that he thinks it's uh, due to uh, a supplement that he's taken forever, but that he admitted that he didn't get checked. And I just want to send these reminders, man. If you're a fighter, if you know somebody that's a fighter, if you're involved with somebody that's a fighter, there's a couple things you got to do. Number one, Check every single thing that you take, every single thing they put in your body as far as supplements go. They do have an approved list, man. They, I know it's a pain in the ass, but they do have a documented list of, like, these are approved supplements. And, and you know, these have all been independently tested and verified, so take these. And then the other thing that's a big one that I, I guarantee you probably hardly anybody does this, but it's a really, really wise one. I've heard Jeff Nowitzki talk about it and I've heard other people talk about it, is out of every supplement you take, don't take the full bottle. Like, leave a little bit of it, whether it be save a pill, it, yeah. powder, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Just take – yeah, and listen, you don't have to save it forever, but maybe like a year's worth, six months' worth at the very at the very minimum. Just throw that little bit into a box and store that box somewhere. The reason being that if for some reason you do get what you think is a contaminated supplement causing a positive test, but you don't have any of that batch left because, say, maybe you know, you're taking a, a whatever it may be and you finish one bottle and you move on to the next one it was actually manufactured in a different uh, batch. When, when USADA or Nevada, when they go to test this, this batch of supplements, they're testing your current one when in reality the one that made you positive was in this other batch and they don't have any of it to test. So um, that's an extra step that I'm sure most people don't do, but uh, it's a very, very important one. And... Again, I know that may sound like a lot, but when this is your primary source of income and it is your career, I just think you have to take those those precautions, right? I mean, I think about like think about all the precautions you take with with your backup of your of your video stuff and and the way you treat your equipment and all like it may be a little oh, excessive yeah. to some, but that's your livelihood, right? So you take extra steps that the average person probably wouldn't to ensure that you can do everything and operate fine and make your money. Yeah, and just gutted, especially this, you know, and they've even said in the past, and, and especially if he's saying that this is something he's taken forever, I mean, we've seen fighters in, in the past just send their supplements. They send some of the supplements to the UFC or USADA. They probably just send them to UFC because I'm sure they're not reaching out to USADA. I'm like, hey, let me send it to you because they could send it to the UFC, and the UFC are like, hey, USADA, test this. I mean, I've heard of them sending their supplements, you know, where it's like, okay, you don't want to check a list or whatever. Send me what you're taking. We'll test it, and then you know for sure. But even then... Like you said, it's not a bad idea to keep a hold of that bottle or, you know, keep, keep a dose in there or something, you know, to save just in case, even if they change their mind. Because, yeah, I mean, if it says that something that has been taken for a long time, you're wondering why it didn't hit ping something in, in the past. So maybe there is manufacturing differences or whatever. But still for a guy that, you know, uh, I don't – knowing what he's gone through, you know, you just want this guy to have a good life. I, you want him to be able yeah. to kind of – you know, he's had he's had about the, the, the harshest – shit that you can think happen like uh like has he done i has he you know does you know depending on how religious you you are or something you know you, you know i could see where somebody's like hasn't god tested him enough you know yeah. um um but man um i feel gutted for the dude because the guy is a nice guy i don't i would never think that you know and I'm, again maybe this is because we f feel close and kind of feel you know um you know, it's hard to separate the differences sometimes when you when you respect somebody and you really like somebody. I don't I've never seen anything from him to make me think that he's a cheater and that he would want it to, to do something to do that sort of thing. I agree. Um, but yeah, man, I'm just just gutted for him because um, I did pick him to win this fight. I think this was a very winnable fight. And uh, he's always gives us good answers. <clears throat> but again, man. Yeah, I mean. 
you realize the difference is when these fighters, when something happens and they're not able to fight, you know, how hard that is. I know if I wasn't able to work, I'd be, I'd be devastated. Um, mm. You know, I don't have a, a stockpile of money saved up to where I can just live without doing my job. And I'm not sure how it is for Walt, but I know most of these fighters need these fights. And now with there being the potential that, you know, depending on the outcome of what's happening, you know, there might be other fights that he misses. You know, you just want, I just want a quick resolution. And, and I hope there's, you know, there's not some sort of, I hope there's just like a quick, easy, good resolution and not, you know, something that's going to punish the guy for, for a long time. Um, yeah, hopefully they can find nice out guy. one of these, you know, one a, a way to get this one down to six months or something like that. You know what I mean? To find out that, yeah, yeah it was a supplement because he helped and because, you know. Hopefully they find a way to get it because I agree, man. The man has gone through enough. Not not that that would give him license to cheat if he is cheating, but I yeah, agree with course. you. But I agree with you. I don't think that I don't think that he would be. Uh, nothing has indicated to me that he's that kind of guy. But uh, yeah, we we shall see. Felt felt bad for him. All right. Uh, yeah, that sucked. Main event: Holly Holm, Mario Buena Silva. Uh, I mean, listen, it's number three versus number ten at one thirty-five. There are real title implications. Um, there's a lot of discussion of maybe. That's where this opinion. makes sense. Yeah, yeah. When we're talking about the, about the, this card with the, with the, with Nunez leaving, this fight makes a lot of importance for the division. Yes. So, if somebody was like, "Why is this the main? Why is this the main event?" One, it's Holly Holm for for Pete's sake. Yep. But this legit makes this is a, this is a huge fight when when it comes in, into terms of who could be fighting for the title next. I, I completely agree, and and I, and it does. You know, it's it's funny. So. Um, Kind of leads this. All right, so a lot of people are saying Juliana Pena versus Raquel Pennington. Um, and <laughs> did, you, did you watch I saw, the interview? I saw <laughs> Mara Buena Silva tried to get you in trouble. Tried to get you in oh trouble. She was like, she was like, tell me honestly, do you want to see this fight? Do you want to see this fight? And you were like, like regardless yeah. of how I feel, you think I'm ever going to say anything that gives Pena more fuel to kick junkies' butt? I'm like, <laughs> no, thank you. Yes, I want to see that fight. Oh, well, but yeah. I do want to see that fight. You know, it's so the most I logical guess, I, fight. I, I th- it, it is. It is. And I mean, like, Pennington's been grinding for it. I mean, Juliana's calling for it. Julia, Juliana's into it. So it's like, but what was weird is that um, when the cameras were done in the room and other stuff, there were certainly other people that were like, ah, I don't want to see that fight. I'm like, man, am I <laughs> am I odd man out? I was like, I wasn't lying. I was like, I'd be interested in seeing that fight. But I also like Rocky a lot. I think Rocky's a great fighter. I think Juliana's a great fighter. I mean, granted, she tends to be off-putting to some people sometimes with the way that she does stuff, and I don't agree with the way that she was sort of bitching after uh, Amanda left and retired, but that all being said, she's a hell of a fighter, and Rocky's a hell of a fighter, so yeah, I'm I'm down for that fight, but I was certainly in the rarity in the in the press room, and I was a little bit surprised um, that that it was so heavily that others were just like, yeah, I don't want to see that fight, well, and I was like, okay, maybe I'm the weird one, maybe I'm I the would, weird one. Then I would, cha- you know, and... and- and I get it. I, I do understand it, right? They've had some setbacks. They've had some losses, whatever the case may be. But you still have to crown a new champion at some point, right? And I'm not saying yeah. you have to do it right away. Now, okay, look, if we wanted to just get buck wild and say, you know what I would like to see? I would like to see him put an eight-woman tournament together with the winner claiming the belt. That would be cool, but yeah. guess what? It ain't happening. So get that, out of your, get that out of your possibility. It's not happening. So if you've got to make a fight for the title, I mean, it, 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 I mean, get, and, and I don't mean this as any disrespect to anybody else on that list, but this is just what happens when you have a dominant champion for as long as Amanda Nunes yep. was. There's no two people on yep. that list that you go, oh, that's the fight to make because that – no, they've all had losses because they've all gotten set back by the champion. So at that point, yep. you go to number one versus number two, and that's Pena versus that, Pennington. And how cool is that to actually have a one against two? We right. see so many. It's like one against, you know, the upcoming six that that has a gr- that talks shit, or one against number four, or two against seven, or whatever. I mean, like. Just to get back and actually have one against two, that's what a lot of people have been fighting for, for years, saying that you know the rankings were supposed to mean more something like, how can you have somebody outside right. of one and two fighting for the championship? Now we have it. You know, Sure, could their fighting styles, you know, if, maybe they're not the most exciting at times, but they get the job done and you know what you're going to get. Like, If you think that either one of those two are going to go out there and just like walk around and not try to throw punches like when we saw uh, uh, Natan Schulte and I uh, uh, forget who uh, uh, was that just yeah, recently. House that, that is not going to be this fight, you know. Like both of these ladies are going to go in there and give their all. And uh, at points of that, their, their their skills might offset each other and it, maybe it's not the crazy most exciting. But I, I know that both of them are going to go out and give me 110%, 110% and that's enough for me as a, as a fight fan. Um 
that I appreciate that stuff. But also, I mean, I was a guy that homered for Invicta, and some Invicta fights weren't the greatest, but I love the effort. that Any athlete wants to go out there and put 100% and willing to put their their their, their life and body on the line to entertain. I mean, you got to give them respect. So I, I feel like people that just shit on fights like this for no reason – um, is just kind of a slight to the athletes, but I, I think this is a fantastic fight. Uh, I agree. And then, and if, if should it be that those should two, it be that. well, and then, I think it's great. And then you got then you can get interesting with it because then look, they were on the Ultimate Fighter together. They both were on Team Tate, so maybe you could even have. There's going to be heat. Yeah, there's like there's, legit heat. There's some yeah, heat oh, there. there. There, there really is. So there's other ways around it. So anyway, I, I think that's the fight to make. But this number three versus number ten does have some pretty interesting implications as well. So this is a big fight. Um, I will say. Chelsea Chandler brought it up that she heard Ronda Rousey is coming back at 145. Yeah. I, Have I, you heard uh, anything like that? No. I just – look. I didn't either. I'm like, look, where is this coming from? This I've is heard, crazy. I've heard some people suggest that maybe it's possible. I do know that her WWE contract is ending like within the next couple of months or what yeah. have you. Um, and I guess maybe coming back at 45 would make sense just because, you know, it, it has been several years and I know that – you know, the, I wouldn't say the weight cut was hard for her, but, you know, that's not yeah. her walk-around weight by any stretch of the imagination. She does have a pretty significant cut. Um, yep. I just I, – Dude, if they're honest, looking for a savior of the 45, if Ronda came back and said, Dana, I'm coming back, th- that 45 division is not going anywhere. 100%. 100%. And that's and, crazy. I mean, like, and, they would just dub her as the savior of the 45 division now and just give it another title for it. And listen, uh, I mean, look, you need a headliner in December. I mean, look, I know they're saying maybe there's still a possibility for Connor and Chandler in December. I just don't believe there is. I don't believe that, that USADA no is going to issue any exemption. I nope. just think they realize the implications of that it's not going to happen. You do need. Well, hell, at that point, Ronda would need. I read six that as months. Connor entering the pool in December. When when he put the December, and it was like, oh, he's going to fight in December. I was like, bro, that's when he's coming back to the pool. Yeah, he's not trying to fight anytime soon. Well, wouldn't Ronda, Ronda was under Usada too, right? So wouldn't she? She'd have to be. She six still months has to. Too. She still so has she'd to be, have six to be tested well. for six months as well. So yep. she, never mind. I was going to say, well, but I, you know, I guarantee a lot more people would be. Uh, people know. Connor was taking shit to help with an injury. There's no excuse why uh, I'm, nobody's thinking Ron is out there doing something illicit. I think if there was ever a person that most people wouldn't care about an exception coming back, it would be Rhonda. I think there's a I think there's a difference in that in the sense of that when one athlete we know that substances were being taken for the recovery. Um, I can see I I can see where you saw this as well. If we're doing this one and this one, um, you know, it has to be six months. I would think with enough push, knowing that this athlete has legit been retired from the sport and is coming back, and I can see where they would maybe give her a, uh, an exemption just for the fact that they there was no reason to think that she had b- taking anything where they know for a fact Connor's been taking shit, you know. Right. So I could see where they stick to the guns, but I wouldn't be surprised if they gave Ron a, an exemption. Uh, That's interesting. And I I just don't know if people would care. Would you care if they gave her an exemption? Boy, I tell you what, it'd be an interesting uh, slippery slope, right? Because, I mean, you yep. laid out why it makes sense, but that would be awfully hard for people to argue that, like, you know, wait, how come he can and how come she can't? And I know you just made the argument, but I could see a lot of people yep. going, no, 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 if it's good for the goose, it's good for the gander, you know what I'm saying? It's got to be both of them over there. So, uh, interesting. I, but, I, but let me say this. From a financial standpoint, from a UFC standpoint, from a hype standpoint – a Ronda Rousey return does make sense. I will say it seems like the women that have been asked about this have all been like, "Uh uh-uh, she doesn't get to go away for this many years and come back and just step in. Like, I know that they all have reverence for her and what she helped do for the women, but I haven't seen many women that have been like, oh, yeah, yeah, let her come back into a title shot. They haven't seemed real happy about it. But more so than any of that, I just – I mean, does – we saw what Ronda was like at the end. She didn't want to be around all this. She didn't want to do all this yeah. stuff anymore. And everything I've ever heard is that financially, like, she is fine. She doesn't need any of it. So she wouldn't be coming back even for the money. So she'd have to be coming back because she wanted to do it. And I just don't see it. I just don't see it. I just wonder. I mean, I wonder if the time away, and I think, you know, if there was ever something that kicked off those juices again, dealing with the WWE and some of the stuff that she had to go through, um, I wouldn't be surprised if she, not that it made her miss this sort of thing, but I think some of the stuff that I guarantee her time over the WWE hasn't been all roses and, 
you know, perfect things as well. She was dealing, getting heckled from the crowd, getting all kinds of other stuff. Um, the worst case in this one is that it's just a real fight that she's going into. But when you look at the stuff and some of the, the WWE stuff, the physicality of that sport is just crazy. I mean, she's getting, oh, yeah. you know, they're getting thrown on there. There's real damage that's happening to these athletes it just happens to be kind of scripted. Yo, yep. <laughs> there, this is not scripted, but it's real damage that's going to happen in these fights. But I think there is something to it that maybe it did spark a little something, but also too the amount of money that the UFC would throw around to have a, another major star come back, even if it's for a short time, um, I mean, I think they were doing that even with Jones. I mean, they realized Jones star power, and I'm sure they're throwing money around knowing that there's a very possibility that he could win the title and walk away. There's no guarantee that he's going to stick around for a while, too. So, I mean, I think they're getting used to this idea that, hey, we understand that if we can bring some of these big names back for some big money, um, that it it works itself out, you know. So, I don't know. I'm not willing to – I mean – I just thought it was so surprising that just all of a sudden it kind of came out of nowhere. But, I mean, man. Like it was just a known fact. Like it was just known. Like it was just a known (laughs) fight. I know. We want to be like, who's your sources? Like, you know. But, yeah, two belts on the line. Um, You know, the lioness is gone. You know, the the champ killer is gone. And uh, there's money to be made. And the unique thing about it is, you know, I don't know if it was Chandler that said it or who else said it. You know, like they're not afraid of Ronda anymore. They do have reverence right. for what she was able to do, but I think, you know, I forget who called her the the one-trick pony. Somebody sort of said that in a phrase today. Um, the game has evolved a lot since then. Women's MMA has evolved a lot. Um, the women, while they do revere her, it's like any of these guys, like Nico going out against Robbie Lawler, you know, knowing that this was going to be a retirement fight. The guy just got in the Hall of Fame. But they understand that, you know, like these people are human people. They're not the same, but they got to go in at the end of the day and get that paycheck. And I think it's the same thing with Ronda. Some of these athletes probably got inspired to get in the sport because of Ronda. But is that going to stop them from wanting to go in there and punch her in her face? And I guarantee all of them drilled arm bars from day one because of what Ronda was able to do. Yep. Um, so, um, you know, remember when. Um, Gracie came back and fought, and that was just a massive oh. nightmare. And it was just you felt so bad for him. You know, it was just like, bro, you should have stayed away, Hoyce. You should have stayed away because all of a sudden you know, they're watching their hero just get demolished, and you're like, oh, that's not quite as fun. Um, there's that possibility that could happen, but I'm not, I'm not, you know, I don't know. Maybe those are just all rumors, and maybe you know she's gonna hear people saying that she's coming back and laughing like I'm not sure where these people are talking about, but. I think with her being able to do doing this WWE stuff and dealing with some of that other stuff, the idea of getting these big paychecks, whether it's from one fight or two fights, she could come back and literally probably collect some paychecks just doing promotional stuff, saying that she's going to come back and just say she's going to fight just for one fight. You know, who knows what she can get out of it? But um, you know, now I'm, I'm kind of in for it. I'm into it. You know, do I think she's going to you know ever be? um what she was before no because i think the game's caught up to where she was she was and surpassed where she was at mm-hmm. you know but that doesn't mean i don't want to see ron in it because i remember when ron in her heyday was a lot of fun to be around i mean like before there was connor there was ronda yep you know so um i'm in for it i mean um i remember shooting a lot of really cool stuff with her um like at the Shark Tank at the the Mandalay Bay and all kinds of like at the the Stratosphere um, people forget, like, you know, they were the first person that really had to jump through hoops and carried the brand, you know, when well, I mean, not the first, but the, one of the first people that made it uh, worldwide phenomenal was Ronda Rousey, you know, absolutely. so if she wanted to come back, she, she's earned that right. Um, oh, to come absolutely. Back and, she, she absolutely um, can. I'm not saying that she should come back and be awarded the title and just say, Hey, you don't have to fight for this. We're just going to give you this vacant title. That would be kind of shitty. Um, but <laughs> kind of like, we gave it to you once we're giving it to you again how about that we give it to you the second time we did it once i mean we kind of set a precedent with you uh, and the no, only reason we're be doing this because it's vacant you know like hey guys we were going to get rid of this division but instead how about we're going to give ronda the vacant and you guys can fight her for it oh that would be hilarious people would go crazy people would go crazy. but what if she agreed to it uh, one one shot deal like i will come defend the belt i want points I want pay-per-view points. I want champ points. I want my a championship pay, whatever. 
and uh, no guarantee that uh, I come back after this. For the record, I do not think it happens, but if it does happen, <laughs> I will be there to watch it because I'm with you, man. Hell Jeez. yeah. I would be there for it. All right, listen, I got to uh, pack up. I got to take the young man to jujitsu, and then I'm going to head to the airport tonight. I am flying out to Tunica, Mississippi for CFFC 121 on Friday night. So make sure you tune in on UFC Fight Pass if you can. We got a great main event between Jose Perez and Chris Vassal. Uh, The former champ, Raheem Forrest, is in the building as well. It's a great lineup top to bottom. We'll tell you all about it on the broadcast. Andre Petrosky will be with me, my man CM Punk. Is tied up this weekend, so Andre Petrosky is going to be on commentary with me. And then I fly back in time that I land from the airport, and provided I have not poisoned myself again, I will make my way to the UFC Apex uh, for the fight. So I'll make it in time. I'm not sure you're going to have many uh, leftovers in fridges wherever you're going. Uh, no, you know, no. I, <laughs> I, 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 hopefully nothing like that will happen. So I'm proud of myself that I made it through this. I was a little bit worried, but uh, maybe we're getting a little better. So I'm no, a little, you did fine. You I'm did a little fine. worried about the drive to jiu-jitsu tonight, but hopefully we'll be okay. <laughs> so we'll just you have some, Stop at the store and pick up some Depends. Put on, put on one of them, them pull, adult diapers pull, or something. Pull over and puke on the side of the road or something. So All right, listen. Uh, appreciate uh, everybody. hope everybody uh, in, enjoyed it. I appreciate you doing this uh, remotely with me, Cold Coffee. Of course, if you want to take your uh, – Support of the show to the next level. We always do have patreon.com slash the NBA Road Show, and we very much appreciate everybody that supports us over there. Matt Clark, I have not forgotten about you, but I got so damn sick I didn't get to put anything together on your question. So we will get to that next week, and next week we'll have a lot of time because the UFC uh, is off in uh, merry old England, and uh, you and I are not making that trip, so you and I will be uh, hanging out here in Las Vegas. And then, uh, oh, wait. Frosty beverages. That sounds like day drinking. Maybe we'll have to. Oh, now I'm gonna have to. No, oh, maybe we have to do a remote one on that one too because I think I'll be in Florida. I think I'll already be in Florida for CFSC. This I guy. Got, I know. This back guy. to back. Back to back CFSC babies. We got lots of stuff coming. We'll figure it out though. We'll get it done. Uh, I kind of like doing this remote. Man, again, maybe we end up shifting a video one of these days. I kind of like doing it like this, even though it does. It means that we're not having frosty beverages together. But uh, anyway. Everybody has a great weekend. I'll be there. I'll be there. I'll be back in Vegas on Saturday. We'll have the and a half episode and all that. In the meantime, everybody enjoy yourself and uh, thanks for listening.